Chapter 4, Section 4 deals with multiplying rational numbers. This should largely be a review because you already know how to multiply fractions, you already know how to multiply decimals, and you already know how to multiply positive and negative numbers. Now we're just going to put it all together into one big happy pop. Your content objective said students will apply understandings of multiplications to rational numbers and use order of operations to solve real world problems. Suggested pacing says this should be a one day lesson, so let's get busy and knock it out. Have you ever used a recipe to make your favorite dish? The recipe shown serves six people. There it is. Suppose you're hosting a picnic with 15 people attending. So you got a six person recipe and you need something for 15 people. The question they have for you on this is, how could you find the amount needed of each ingredient if you wanted to serve 15 people? Assume each person has one serving. Yeah, like who really just has one serving at a picnic? I mean, really? Anyhow, these are the kind of questions we're going to learn how to answer during this lesson. The rules for multiplying integers also apply to positive and negative rational numbers. So we're going to take and select whether each product is going to be a positive or a negative. First one, we have a positive number times a negative number. The answer is negative. Check your answer. Good. Next one, you have a positive times a positive. That's going to be a positive. And then for next, we have a negative times a positive. That is going to be negative. And finally, we have a negative times a negative, and that is, of course, going to equal to a positive, just like it did when we were working with integers. So let's take a walk on how we would multiply negative 3 fourths times a negative 7 ninths. They set the problem up here for us, and remember, whenever you're multiplying integers, the first thing you really want to do is look for things that you can simplify. And this problem, the 3 and the 9, will simplify each other out. And you can see they did that in the next spot over here. 3 went into 3 once, and 3 went into 9 three times. That's the only things that will simplify out of that problem. From here, we're going to do your numerator times your numerator, and your denominator times your denominator. Now, this is the way the textbook shows it, which is a good way to do it. It's not necessarily what I would do, but there's nothing wrong with it. Notice they took the negative signs that were with each one of your fractions and they put them with the numbers in the numerator. From there, you have a 1 times 7 is 7, and a negative times a negative, that's going to become a positive 7. A 4 times 3 is going to be 12. And if you simplified your fraction right here, your answer is already going to be in lowest term there. So, what are you going to put in for your answer? Well, they kind of already gave it to you. It's going to be a 7 over 12, check, accept, and check, and there we go. We're good to go. And now it's going to be your turn to take this next problem and solve it on your own. Be sure to pause the video when you do it, and here it comes, maybe. Almost. There it is. We have a negative 2 fifths times a positive 3 tenths. Go ahead and work that one out, and then I will show you how I would work that problem. Now, when I work the problem, I'm just going to work it right where it sits there, and I'm going to start off by looking for things that I can simplify. So in that aspect of it, I can take my three, 2, 2 goes into 2 1 times, and 2 goes into 10 5 times. That is the only thing that will simplify out from that problem. From here, I'm going to say 1 times 3 is 3. 5 times 5 is 25, and a negative times a positive, well, that's going to be a negative. That is really all I expect for showing your work. Nothing more complex than that. You don't have to do all that fancy foo-foo stuff the textbook did. Just circle your answer, and you're done. Let's go back to our problem, type in our answer, which is a negative fraction, 3 over 5, except and check. Uh-oh. What did we do? Oh, dang it. It's not 3 over 5. I'm thinking and not talking. That's going to be a negative 3 over 25. So from there, oh, dang it. Messed it up again. And check it. Now we're good. 
But what if we had a problem involving mixed numbers like you see here? Now we've talked before about the fact that when you're adding and subtracting mixed numbers and fractions, there's times when you can work them as a mixed number. That does not apply when you're multiplying. When you're multiplying, you don't get a choice. You must start off by taking and changing those mixed numbers to an improper fraction, which hopefully they're going to show us here in a second. All right, they've got it up and running, so the very first thing they're going to do is change 3 and 1 fifth to 16 fifths and 1 and 1 14th to 15 14th. After that, they're going to work it just like they did the last one. They're going to simplify before they multiply. In doing that, 5 went into 5 once, 5 went into 15 three times, 2 went into 16 eight times, and 2 went into 14 seven times. Next, they're going to multiply, and they're going to do it their way where they took that negative sign and attached it to the 8. You can see that right here. So they have negative 8 times a positive 3 is going to be a negative 24, and a 1 times 7 is 7. 24 over 7, that's going to be equal to a negative 3 over negative 3 and 3 sevenths for your final answer as a mixed number. Always be sure to circle your answer. No reason for me to type it in there because the answer is given to you right there. And once again, it is going to be your turn to solve a problem. This time they give it to you as a mixed number or two mixed numbers. Both of them are negative. Pause the video and work on this. Check your answer and then I'll show you how I did it. Did you get it right? Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off, of course, by using my Texas approach. Where I've got my T and my X, also known as plus and times. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is going to give me a 7 over 6, and that's negative, times, and then I'm going to end up doing here a, the same thing. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 2 is going to be a 16 over 7, and that's going to be negative 2. Now remember, when you're doing a problem like this where they didn't use a time symbol, I like to have a time symbol, doesn't really matter. But if even if you use a time symbol, you still have to have parentheses when this number is negative. Because that negative number right there is going to use this knife and try and murder the multiplication symbol. And we cannot have any multiplication symbols murdered, so we are locking our negative number in the jail cell, you see, with the parentheses to keep our time symbol safe. From here, I'm going to simplify. I'm going to say 7 goes into 7 once, 7 goes into 7 once. Next, I'm going to say 2 goes into 6 three times, and 2 goes into 16 eight times. That is much simplifying as I can do. I'm going to say 1 times 8, that's going to equal to 8. 3 times 1, that's going to equal to 3. A negative times a negative is a positive. And of course, 8 over 3 is going to be a 2 and two-thirds, and that is not something I should have to show you how to do. Um, changing that simple improper fraction to a mixed number, you should be good with doing that by now. But what about when we have mixed numbers and fractions put together? Well, the rules are going to be the same here as they were when we were adding them and where we're sub we were subtracting them. If the fractions or mixed numbers or decimals that can terminate, then you can write them as terminating decimals and work them, or you can work them as fractions. And most of the time when multiplying, I'm going to choose working as fractions every time. But if it turns into a repeating non-zero digit, like you have with the two-thirds here, you don't have a choice. At that point, you still you have to convert all of them into fractions and work them as fractions because a non-terminating, non-zero digit means that you're going to end up with numbers that wouldn't be multiplied otherwise. So let's take a look at what they mean by doing that. The first problem they've offered us is one-third times a negative two and seventy-five hundredths. Is one-third a number that can be written as a terminating decimal? Well, the denominator is three, and for it to be a terminating decimal, the factors can only be twos and fives. So, nope, we cannot turn that into a terminating decimal. That means we must work this as a fraction. So from there, we're going to take and change the one-third. We're going to leave the one-third alone, but we're going to change that negative two and seventy-five hundredths to the mixed number negative two and three-fourths. 
because 75 hundredths is three-fourths, and that's something you should know intuitively by now. That's not a huge leap. After that, it works just like everything we've done before. We're going to take that mixed number, change it to an improper fraction, simplify. Well, nothing's going to simplify in this one. So from there, we're going to multiply 1 times 11 is 11, 3 times 4 is 12, and a positive times a negative is going to be a negative. So we get a negative 11 over 12 for your final answer. No reason for me to type it in the box, but you may want to for your notes. The answer, of course, is right there, so why would I want to retype that? Now, the textbook does ask this interesting question. Is it possible to find the product without writing the numbers in the same form? I don't think it is. If it is, I have never seen anybody do it. You either have to have all your numbers be fractions or all your numbers be decimals. You can't have a mixed match of them. And now it's going to be your turn to work through a problem. So you take time, pause the video, and see what answer you come up with to this one. Positive 2 thirds times a negative 4 and 25 hundredths. Pause the video and work it. The first thing we have to ask ourselves with this problem is can it be written as a terminating decimal, assuming you want to try to. The presence of this 3 in the denominator says the answer is no. The only terminating decimals have factors of just 2's and 5's in your denominator, so we're going to have to leave that one as a fraction. That means we also are going to have to change negative 4 25ths as a fraction, which is going to become negative 4 and 1 4th. Now, I like to include the multiplication dot. The, the textbook doesn't. To me, it just looks a little bit cleaner and makes more sense if that dot's there. Next, I'm going to take that mixed number. I'm going to change it into a proper fraction using that good old Texas approach. Let's change the color there for Texas just to kind of make it stand out. My T and my X. From there, 4 times 4 is 16 plus 1 is going to be 17 over 4. Next, we're going to simplify. And in simplifying, 2 is going to go into 2 once. 2 is going to go into 4 two times. That's the only things that are going to simplify in that. So now we're going to multiply. 1 times 17 is 17. 3 times 2, that's going to be 6. A positive times a negative is going to be a negative. But we're not done. Let's go ahead and round robin this one because it is not really quick to look at and figure out the answer. 6 goes into 17 two times. 2 times 6 is going to be 12. Subtract that out. You get 5 left over. So your answer is 2 and 5, 6. And of course, that is going to be a negative 2 and 5, 6 for your final answer. I'm going to jump back over here. And you can see that that is the same exact answer we have on the screen. Easy math. But what if our problem came to us like this one, where they had 1 half times A times B, and they gave us A and B, one of which is a mixed number, the other is a negative fraction. How are we going to work it? We're going to work it just like we would anything else. So we took the A and substituted in the um, positive 1 and 3 sevenths that you see right there. We took the B and substituted in the negative 4 ninths that you see right there. From there, what do they have to do? Well, they have to change that mixed number into an improper fraction. You see they did this right here. Next, they're going to simplify, and they can simplify anything on the top with anything on the bottom. In doing that, they notice the fact that 2 went into 2 once, and 2 went into 10 five times. They could have also have gone from the 2 and the 4, and it still would have worked. It would have given you the same answer. Those are the only things they're going to simplify there. So now they're going to take and set up the multiplication. Notice they bring the negative sign in with the numerator and the 4 ninths. 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times a negative 4 is going to be negative 20. And then 1 times 7 is 7. 7 times 9 is 63, giving you a negative 20 over 63 for the final answer. Now, since they gave the answer to us there, I'm not going to type it in here. But you probably want to do that so you have it for your notes. Now that is where we're going to stop part one of this lesson. Come back and finish part two. We only have a few resources left to knock out, so it shouldn't take us very long, and then you will be ready to take on your homework tonight.